Hi guys, and welcome to Escape Wheel Watch Reviews. My name is Steve, and today we're going to be reviewing the Mackie Do Mosaic 38. I received this watch for free. I don't have to send the watch back, but you guys know the deal by now. No matter how I get a watch in on this channel, you're always going to get my honest opinion. And if by the end of this review, you do want to pick one of these up, I'm going to be leaving a link down in the video description. That is to the official Mackie Doo website. You can go check it out. They have tons and tons of options, which we'll get here, get to here in just a second. The full retail price for this watch is 330 US dollars. That's before any taxes, VAT, customs, sales, anything like that. These have pretty much been on a discount since it arrived, uh, varying between 200 and 220 US dollars. The watch comes in 13 different colorways that you can see here. Different dial patterns, different case colors as well, so you've lots of options to choose from. Uh, they also sell this in a two-hand only quartz variant for a little bit less money and in some other colors as well. The watch case and bracelet are made of 316L stainless steel. It has a sapphire crystal with anti reflective coating. It has a push pull crown, a screw down case back, 50 meters of claimed water resistance, and the watch is powered by the Miyota 9015 high beat automatic movement. So I have to say, I am pretty impressed with what you're getting for your uh, currently 200 US dollars. Uh, that is a great price from a UK based micro brand. Uh, and the fact that you're getting a Miyota 9000 in this thing, uh, full stainless steel, sapphire, all that good stuff. Um, at a price like that, I'm pretty sure, correct, someone correct me if I'm wrong, this has got to be one of the cheapest Miyota 9000 series movements that I've seen. Um, I think there's a few outliers as far as like, uh, I believe the Cadison Diamond is one of them. That's the first one that came to mind. Uh, but 200 US dollars for a Miyota 9000 and a full stainless steel um, yeah, it's pretty impressive. Uh, however, this watch won't be staying in my collection for one reason alone. I hope it's something that Mackie Dude takes, takes to heart and fixes or updates in a new version of this thing. Um, but yeah, so I say we get into the full review and let's find out what that is. But before we do, do a quick wrist check for the day. Wearing the San Martin SN0129, I believe. This is the three-hand one. Absolutely stunning dial. This one will be coming up on the channel pretty soon. Absolutely love that purple though. All right, let's get to the dimensions. Got a case diameter of 38 millimeters, case thickness of 8.9 millimeters. The bracelet starts at 22 millimeters. It does taper down to just under 18 millimeters. The total length of this is 51.9 millimeters. Sized up for my seven and a half inch wrist with three links removed. Weighs about 128 grams. So I think the 38 millimeter integrated sports watch is just a perfect size. Uh, I don't like the fact that this has the male end links or the fixed end link there. Uh, it kind of sticks out. It makes this wear very, very long. Um, but I like the diameter of it, the thickness under nine millimeters thick, which is amazing. I'm glad they're not just using one of the, the current on the shelf, uh, you know, PRX style cases. Um, yeah, they, they made this one specifically for the Miyota 9000. So it's super, super slim. It looks great. Uh, it's actually pretty darn comfortable as well. As well. Um, so I'm going to go outside right now throw it on my wrist for you. And here we are on my 7.5 inch wrist. And as you can see, for me, it wears fine. That length is going to be a turn off for some people, but you can see there, really nice thin case. It wears great. I love the light play off of the flat link bracelet, obviously, taken directly from the PRX, but uh, they did a very good job on this thing. You can tell the legibility on it is pretty good not the best but definitely far from the worst um, but yeah i think they just did a really nice job i love the little polished accents all over the place it just looks great and it's actually super comfortable and here we are popping out in some direct sunlight and you can see here uh, there is like a sunburst effect to it it looks really interesting really cool looking uh, there is a little bit of ar coating as well so it doesn't get too washed out really um, but yeah, I just think the watch looks really good on wrist. The thinness makes it for me. Any integrated bracelet watch needs to be thin, in my opinion, for it to look halfway decent. So the fact that this is under 9 millimeters really, I mean, just makes it for me. So uh, I do like the color of the dial as well. It's definitely not as bright as the images online show. Um, it's kind of a muted green color, uh, but I still think it looks really good. All right, no straps for this, obviously, so let's go back inside. Let's get back to this review. All right, so let's talk about case finishing. Case finishing is a mixture of brushed and polished surfaces. We have a vertical brushing on the top of the bezel here and on the top of the case itself. It's a pretty coarse brushing, but that's kind of typical for this watch style. Uh, you have a 
polished chamfer on the bezel there looking really really good nice sharp transitions too i don't see any bleed over and the polishing itself actually looks pretty high quality so uh, i am pretty happy with the case finishing on this thing you can see here we have horizontal brushing on the sides here you've got your hexagonal crown there which is signed with the Mackie Joe logo you have these nice high polished chamfers as well everything is done to a really nice standard you have nice sharp transitions between the brushing and polishing I don't like I said earlier I, I don't see any bleed over at all uh, sadly I did pick up a scratch right there um, but yeah pretty darn happy with the case finishing on this thing you can see the brushing on the end link there matches the case just perfectly. The tolerances in there are nice and tight as well. Flipping over to the case back here, you have a screw down case back. Make sure brushed and polished there. You do have a little spec sheet around the outside. Uh, it is a display case back that is just a mineral crystal. I tested it. Uh, but actually pretty nicely done. You can see there you got a custom Makidu rotor. Uh, it's nothing super fancy, but it is a little bit customized there. Um, but everything down here is done really nice. These bottom edges, they could be very sharp, but they are not. Um, yeah, it's a, it's just overall a, a pretty impressive case, uh, especially in a watch like this, $200 from a micro brand. So, uh, yeah, I came away pretty, pretty darn impressed with that case. All right, let's talk about the crystal. First things first, we'll test it for sapphire. It's positive for sapphire. So we have a sapphire crystal on front, mineral crystal on back. This one does have some anti-reflective coating. It's got a blue tint to it there, you can see. Uh, I stated earlier that it doesn't have any air coating, but I can definitely see it here. Um, yeah, pretty happy with the, the air coating on it. It does get a little bit washed out, and it could be better, but uh, a flat sapphire I don't really think needs anti-reflective coating. So the fact that they do have some on here, it's a bit of a bonus. And uh, yeah, I think it actually looks pretty darn good. The crystal does not sit up above the bezel or anything like that. There's, there's no chamfer or anything like that. It's just a dead flat piece of sapphire. All right, let's get close. We'll talk about the dial on this thing. And this is kind of where I start losing a little bit of interest in this piece. Um, the dial here, it's the emerald green, I believe is what they call it. Um, it's definitely not as green as what it shows up in the, the pictures online. Um, sadly, it's kind of a muted green, almost an army green. Um, and yeah, it just doesn't have a very strong sunburst. You can see the mosaic pattern does look pretty cool though. Concentric circles all the way radiating, radiating out. Um, that looks nice. It looks really good. You can see here, you can tell that it's just stamped, but it's done nicely. I got no, no issues with that. The problem that I have with this dial are the indices and the hands. They're just very plain, very kind of boring. Uh, and I think, and I just hoped and wished that they would do something a little bit different with them. And if you can see here, I mean, they're just very plain. They have a little bit of faceting on them, but they're just, I don't know, they, they need to stick out a little bit more. They need some lume in them. There's no lume on the dial itself. The lume on the hands is actually pretty decent. It is BGW-9 lume on the hands, uh, but without anything on the dial to kind of orient yourself, the, worm, the, the, the lume is pretty much worthless. So, um, yeah, I just don't like the choice that they made with the dial on this thing. I like the actual dial background. I actually don't mind this color. I just wish online showed this color instead of the color that it does show. Um, but yeah, the, just the indices and the hands themselves, they're just very boring and very plain. Um, and it, it just kind of reminds me of a, a, like a fashion watch. And uh, I just expect a little bit more from a watch like this. Now I know you're, they have to cut prices somewhere, and that's probably one of the places that they cut the prices on, but I, I think it was the wrong place to cut prices on. I mean, that's that's something that, for me, uh, it's a little bit of a deal breaker. So the dial indices and everything, they are applied straight. Everything looks fine as far as that goes. You do have a date window cut out here, and that's centered in nicely. Um, the printing is done nice as well. So I don't have too much to complain about other than the, the hands and the indices. They just don't match the rest of the watch. Uh, something with a brushed and polished bevel would look awesome on this thing. Um, so yeah, just something for Macadoo to consider. If you guys like it, I see no reason not to get the watch. Um, so yeah, that's just kind of my thoughts on it. Now let's talk about the movement. So the movement inside is the Miyota 9015 high beat automatic. So 28,800 beats per hour. It hacks, hand winds, quick set date. Uh, it has a single directional winding rotor. So you can hear that rotor spinning around a little bit, but it's really not too bad in this watch. Um, yeah, they're great movements. Here's how this one has been running. Sorry, I had a bunch of background noise for some reason. 
Um, but yeah, this one you can see here, I projected a line there and it's running about somewhere between six and 10 seconds a day fast, which is perfectly acceptable for a watch like this. Um, so yeah, the Miyota I'm super happy with. I've got no problems with them. They're starting to flood my collection currently. Uh, and that's mainly because I really like thin cases. This one is nice and thin. So uh, yeah, really happy with that. This one is operated by the three o'clock push pull crown. Nicely signed there. Good grip on the crown too. It's a little tiny thing, but uh, it functions just fine. I've got no real complaints with that either. You pull it out to the first position, which is a little difficult. I'll, I'll say that. Um, that changes your date. You can see it there. Pull it out to the second position. It hacks the movement. This is where you set your time. Everything functions as it should. The alignment is actually pretty darn good as well. Um, yeah, so not too much to complain about in the movement and the crown section. Uh, overall, pretty satisfied with it. All right, so let's talk about the bracelet. So the bracelet is a place where I kind of expected them to cut corners, and they really didn't. Uh, the finishing on the bracelet links, really nicely done, nice and consistent. You can see it's got lots of little polished aspects as well. Each of these center links has a polished chamfer on it. Each of the individual links has a chamfer running around these outside edges here. I mean, the bracelet looks fantastic. It just sparkles just the right amount, in my opinion. Uh, the bottom edge of the bracelet is again pretty nicely rounded off there's no real sharp edges on it the bracelet is assembled with screw pins there i removed three for my seven and a half inch wrist um, you can see here it does drop straight down off of those male end links there so it's really not too bad uh, the fluidity is very nice um, it doesn't pull hair or anything like that so uh, i am pretty happy with the bracelet on this thing they they did a good job i've had a very similar watch uh like a 70 or 80 dollar one um and it was not nearly as nice as this watch. So uh, and that was the, the Spectin Zone PRX that I had. I had a very similar bracelet to this, very similar looking bracelet, and, and that bracelet was garbage. This one is actually really nice. Uh, the issue that I have with this one uh, is the clasp. So it is a butterfly clasp. You can see here there's no button releases. So this is one of those like friction ones, and it is, it's tough to open. <sighs> So you, you gotta, you really gotta get under there to open it up. It's kind of annoying. Um, if someone knows of a better way to do it, please let me know. Um, but you can see here, th this part of the clasp here, this little bar here, just kind of clips underneath this and that's that's how it's held in place. Um, so yeah, it's not the best experience. I wish they would just go with a regular button. I do like the fact that you can't see the buttons, but uh, it's so difficult to close this thing or open this thing on wrist. Um, yeah, it's just not a not a good feeling at all. So um, it does open and close consistently. It's one of those ones where you have to do this side first because you got this part that folds over. Um, once it's in place, there's no real rattle or anything like that from the clasp. Um, so as far as that goes and as far as being hidden like that, I think it looks great. It's just, just a pain in the butt. Um, but yeah, the bracelet itself, the tolerances on the bracelet are really nice. Uh, again, the finishing is just top notch, and just look at the sparkle that you get off of that. Those flat links, it, it looks great. It looks really, really good. This is pretty much on par with the, with the Tissot as far as the finishing goes. I'm quite impressed with it. So there you go, guys. That is the Makido Mosaic 38. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. Makido. Either way, um, it's a UK-based micro brand. Uh, and when they asked me to review their watch and I saw the price of it, I was expecting uh, basically like a Spectin Zone, which is a, you know, under $100 automatic from uh, AliExpress. I was expecting that kind of quality. Um, and what I got was actually quite impressive. The case on it, the bracelet on it, uh, the Miyota 9000 movement is a surprise. The only real letdown for me was the dial and that's mostly just a personal preference type thing. Um, I think a, a fancier index and a fancier handset uh, would really step up the game of this watch and make it a really good competitor. I think the size is perfect, you know, splitting the difference between the 41 and the 35 millimeter PRXs. So um, the size on this thing is perfect. I like all the options that you get as well. So um, yeah, I, I think if you guys are interested in a watch like this and this style, this is definitely one that you should consider um, being nine millimeters thick really helps a lot the miyota 9000 inside are excellent uh, the packaging is really nice and the guys behind the brand seem very nice and helpful as well so 
um, yeah, th they've been great, and uh, I think you guys are probably going to like this watch a lot. If you can get past the dial, like I, I can't quite do it, uh, but if you guys can get past that dial and like it, and maybe like some of the other colors, um, I would highly, highly consider this watch. It, it, for the price, it's impossible to beat. It's great. So um, I think that's it for me. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next one. See ya.